get ready to wrestle. Another classic at the Mid-America Center. Rivalry night at Abraham Lincoln. The girls go down to the wire. And the guys putting up some big numbers. Big Hawkeye 10 showdown up on the hill. The Saints try their luck with some Knights. And the Falcons run with the number two team in the state. The 23rd ranked Reavers play two, their last in Canesville for 2016. I'm Lance Tourdain and I'm a senior. I'm Trey Nixon and I'm a senior for the Abraham Lincoln boys basketball team. And, and the, the Bluff, Bluff Sports Zone starts now. I'm JJ Davis and welcome to our latest and last edition of the Bluff Sports Zone for 2016. And we end with a bang, wrestling baby. You know, it's one of the fastest growing tournaments in the Midwest and it seems like anybody who is anybody is there. The fourth annual CB Classic hits the mats at the MAC. Now 39 teams from five states try their luck against some of the best competition in the nation. It's a great opportunity for coaches and grapplers alike to see just where they're at this early in the season. And as usual, all four from the Bluffs are there. The rest of the time, three and four. Three and four. Ten mats. Around 540 wrestlers. 122. A short time, get another. Ranked in the respective states. Including 14 state champs. We're not going to come out like we did last night. All teaming up in the Mid-America Center. They really love it. Um, and uh, I've never, I haven't had a team drop out yet. And uh, they just keep on asking me and make sure that I ask them back the next year. So um, I got, you know, about 10 teams on the waiting list right now to get in. A school record 11 from district champ Lewis Central got into the state tournament last year, including Gabe Kelgar. Of those record number of guys, we lost a good number of them last year to graduation. Um, and then also this year, there's a couple of those guys that are still not in the lineup for one reason or another. So right in the middle, right in the middle, we've, uh, it's kind of our strength. Our, our lower guys, we have, some, we have some, uh, some new guys in there, some freshmen in there. Also at 106, we don't have anybody there right now, so we're open. Um, and then at the heavyweight, we all, you know, at the heavier weights, we also have some guys that it's their, their first time getting into the lineup. What have you learned at the state tournament the last couple of years that prepares you for this year's final season? Um, well, just knowing it's my last time to go for it is big, but uh, being there three other years, I've learned uh, that there's no one going to be there that's going to be easy, so I just got to come ready to win every match from the first to the last. Last time we saw Thomas Jefferson, the Yellow Jackets sent seven guys to the Wells Fargo Arena. Cesar Salazar here, and just two others returned. We got some guys with some experience uh, through the years, some senior leadership, but we also got some young guys, sophomores and stuff, that still need to uh, do some maturing on the mat. I think our lightweights have uh, some good experience, some good knowledge of the mat. Our middleweights are battlers. They get in there and grind. Our upper weights, they are more of our leadership role there. Biggest difference in the freshman McGuire midkiff and the senior McGuire midkiff? Uh, my, head, my head's on straight as a senior. It wasn't quite as a freshman, and now I'm just on a, you know, a straight path towards that state title. So there's nothing that's going to be able to take me off that path except for myself. The path a little more difficult at Abraham Lincoln. AL just one state qualifier last season. Now things are looking up for the Lynx. For starters, 35 kids are out for the team. That's the most in a while. I've noticed we're a lot tougher. We got a lot better leadership. You know, and with uh, with only three seniors on the team, you know, some of these guys this is their third year wrestling. So it's just that progression that makes us tougher and better leaders. It's a lot more fun to be able to feel the full squad. I mean, it's a, one of the first times I've been able to do that in my tenure here at AL. So it's a lot more fun to be watching, you know, 14 guys wrestle and then five or six like we usually do. Get your head up! Looking for you to be a leader because you're the only guy that went to state last season. You up for it? Right. Yeah, I mean, 
it's a, it's a lot to live up to, but at the same time, you kind of just put your past behind it and you forget about everything that happened last year. That's nothing now. It's a brand new season. You got to show the guys what you're made of and you got to show everybody else what you're made of. There you go. There you Run go. it now. Run on it. St. Albert is made up of 13 guys. That's more than in previous years. The Falcons here did not send one bird to Des Moines in 2016. Freedom, 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 freedom. My hope is the guys that have been on the team will uh, pick up more of a leadership position, start showing these young kids what it's about to be on a wrestling team. Uh, and our hopes are to continue to grow the program. We definitely face an uphill climb, but we've already made a big leap getting 13 kids. And I, I see us continuing to grow and get better and better. So you come into the season with what kind of expectations? The state tournament and to get all the guys around me better. Uh, we have a young team, so we're looking to get better every day, but also have personal goals to get in the state tournament and play some. The Mid-America Center, the place to be one weekend in December. And as we've just heard, four from the Bluffs hoping to find their place when it's all said and done. It's really a neat tournament, and for a number of reasons, one of which is $100 scholarships. 14 will be handed out at the end of the two-day event. Max Southard gets one. The Lewis Central senior wins the 160-pound weight class as Mac outscores a kid from team champ Apple Valley from Minnesota, 8-2 in the final. Now, the two-time state qualifier also has the honor of wearing the animal shirt for LC this season. Class 3A number one McGuire Midkip and Thomas Jefferson beaten in the championship match by Underwood Super Junior Alex Thompson. The 10th rated wrestler in the nation outpoints McGuire 12-5. Now, Elsie's Gabe Kelgard makes it to the semifinals where the junior is knocked off 12 to 3. Apple Valley wins the team title for the second year in a row. Lewis Central finishes 19th, TJ 21st. The fourth annual CB Wrestling Classic just gets bigger and better every year. And it could be, could be a pretty good indicator of things to come. That's not all. The high school basketball season's off and running. The Falcons flying back to state, but up next, TJ at AL. And it's early when we come back. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. Here are a few holiday reminders from the Council Bluffs Recycling Center. Food, styrofoam, bags of any sort, and bows are not acceptable items for recycling. Food and beverage containers, aluminum foil, wrapping and tissue paper, broken down cardboard, and most cards are recyclable at the curb or at drop-off recycling containers. Collection may be delayed due to holidays. Check cbrecycles.com to see if your collection is affected. Happy Holidays from the Council Bluffs Recycling Center. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. These are two teams building for the future, and they're only going to get better. Going to hear from some of these girls for a while. But forget about all that. It's TJ at AL. That's all that needs to be said. And round one in Lynxland. Now, of course, it is an early season litmus test, but it's also going to give a big boost of confidence to the winner. Here's IW TV student Bublin Brandon Taverti. 
two Council Bluff schools meet on the court for the first time this season. First quarter, you know, it's a season of giving. Sophomore Kaylee Shaw takes advantage of her early Christmas present. Lynx draw first blood. Then TJ's Latia Willie responds with the deuce. 13 and 12 jackets after one. Early second quarter, OG, Kaylee Shaw with the three. Then Willie with the turnaround jumper. And the bucket, the freshman with 16 points. It's tied at 17. Late in the half, Allison Schubert showing that the Jackets can also shoot the tray. The freshman with five three-pointers. Thomas Jefferson up 22-17 at the break. Third quarter, Shaw knocking down the three. The Lynx tied at 22. Later in the quarter, Allison Schubert driving in. Oh wait, psych, got him. Schubert knocks down the three, but Ailes up 30 to 27, heading into the fourth. It's tied at 32 with five and a half to play. Mackenzie Spanger with the steal and the layup. Abraham Lincoln closes it out with a 13 and five run. Claire Jones with two of her 16 points. The Yellow Jackets are still fighting to the very end. Latia Willie gets the last second layup. Too little, too late. AL outscores TJ 45-39. You know, we're two and two right now. Um, we feel like we could have been three and one, but we're two and two right now. We're just looking forward to our next game. We take it game by game and stuff, and we're, we're motivated. We think we can give people a push and stuff. A couple of them were open. Some of them was a game plan, but we wanted to mostly get those inside shots, but when they were open on the outside, we decided to take them. It's been really good. We've been ups and downs, but right now we're pretty consistent, and I think it's gonna get even better as we go on. The shot was just there the last couple games. We've been struggling a lot with our threes and we want to minimize them, but we took a lot tonight. And they weren't really falling for us, but we just kept shooting. Um, I was really motivated because as a freshman starting varsity, this game is a really big game for me. So I try to, came out, try to come out and work hard. It's been a season of kind of near misses for us. Um, I thought we had a real good shot tonight um, coming into the game, and I thought we had a real good shot all the way through. And, you know, we're just talking about it. Close games like this come down to a handful of possessions. They come down to a possession here or two possessions there. And, and we just had some loose possessions late in this game tonight. The Lynx have owned the Jackets. AL has now knocked off TJ at least the last 16 times. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Brandon Taverdi. Thanks, Brandon. And then there's the guys game. Abraham Lincoln coming off that magical season unbeaten against the state until the Lynx landed at state. And for the Yellow Jackets, here's IW TV student, the sleeper, Joel Devick. High school basketball is back in action. And why not start off with a classic, the Battle of the Presidents. Abraham Lincoln hosts Thomas Jefferson. First quarter, Lynx come out firing. Tyler Myers finds himself open, nothing but net. AL up early, 12-5. TJ decides to answer, Chandler Squibb, Stops on a dime and gives him nine cents change. The junior cuts the lead to five. Home team bears down on D. Troy Houghton steals it and fights through contact. And one for the junior. Abe Lincoln takes a 22 to 11 lead into the second frame. Yellow Jackets keep fighting back. Daniel Carey finds the backdoor cut to Squibb, who banks it home. The TJ Point Man leads the way with 15 points for the visitors. Point guard scoring, Ailes Preston Fant says anything you can do, I can do better. The junior gets the bucket and the foul right before the half. 45-26, Abraham Lincoln at the break. Into the second half, more of the same. Lyndon Tornayton, corner pocket. The junior forward hits three trays and leads the Lynx with 21 points. And then Tornayton to Houghton. Easy bank shot, and Abraham Lincoln runs away with it in the second half. Final score, 87 to 44. We really played unselfish, and that, that's everything for our team. We have a pretty talented group of kids, so when they play unselfish and they move the ball, um, we're, we're pretty good, I think. But when we don't, you know, I mean, we, we tend to struggle a little bit offensively, so um, that was really good to see. I think our guys did a great job in our first two games of doing that both games. So. We lost a lot of seniors and they uh, pretty much set the bar and uh, we just want to get back to the state obviously and uh, we're just trying to do everything we can, uh, just 
play how it may basketball on selfish, play good on defense, and uh, the wins will come. We don't care who's scoring. Like, if I'm scoring, the other guys don't care. If the other guys are scoring, I don't care. I just want to win, and I think everyone has that mindset. We're not just going to sit here and say, oh, we're good where we're at. You know, we have a lot of stuff we need to work on, and that's what we're going to do this week. I think I don't think we were disciplined enough defensively. I think that's why they kind of spread it out on us quite a bit. But uh, tomorrow we'll get better. We just got to stay dedicated and work hard every day. It doesn't matter whether it's game day or just a practice. We just got to bring 110% every single day. A young team like this is important to uh, build off of uh, how we did. But we have so much potential. I mean, uh, we have a lot of young guys, like I said before. Uh, although the scoreboard didn't show it tonight, our uh, team's dedicated and we're 100% in and they're trying to change the face of uh, TJ basketball. With five seniors and 10 players six feet or taller, Abraham Lincoln looks for a repeat of last year and more. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Joel Divick. Thanks, Joel. The 23rd ranked Reavers look to improve on their ranking at home. Hey, the Saints in a battle of unbeatens after the break. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sports Med. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sports Med invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sports Med. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Council Bluffs is a growing, vibrant community. It's becoming a modern 21st century community. We will be the largest free Wi-Fi hotspot in the United States. Our vision is about building a community where families want to live and businesses want to locate. We see that as a great um, potential enhancement for future growth in the city. The St. Albert girls basketball team lost some key players from a season ago, including City Player of the Year Alyssa Carley and Post Player Paige Beacom, to name a few. So we're going to see some new faces up on the hill. It's their time to shine. It's not going to be easy, though. Of course, it never is in the always rough and tumble Hawkeye 10 Conference. Here's IDUB TV student Batlin Brady Engel. The Saints look to stay undefeated as they host Kemper Catholic. First quarter, Tegan Blackburn with a nice pass underneath. Aaron Wright starts the scoring. Still first, Grace Steffies left wide open. And knocks down the three. Knights by one. Later, Blackburn with another beautiful pass to find Sidney McLaren for the bucket. St. Albert with a 10-7 lead after one. Second quarter, Amy Adams bowls her way inside to get to the hoop. The visitors tie it up at 12. Kemper. Still pounding it inside. Kaylee Peter passes it around the defender to Adams for the and one. 15 to 12, Knights. Just before half, McLaren gets the steal and scores it. Game all knotted up at 19 going to the break. Second half, Knights inside. Adams can't finish. But Peter does and draws the foul. 22, 19 visitors. Still third, Peter again with the ball, drives the baseline and lays it in. 34-23 Knights. Harold Kemper outscores St. Albert 17-4 in the quarter and takes a commanding 36-23 lead into the fourth. Kemper in full control, Kara Peter with the easy finish inside. 43-32 visitors, Knights close it out. Peter loses it inside but gets it back and finishes. Carol Kemper wins it 45-32. Well, we compete, 
and I and I like uh, I like that. I think we got some great competitors there. I think they play hard. Uh, tonight, you know, was our best defensive effort of the season so far. I think that we definitely need to work on not turning the ball over and just uh, more communication on matching up on defense and just being more patient on offense and getting the best shot. We have really good communication and we really connect well as a team, just as people. So I feel like that really helps us be able to know where each other are and like how we play as individuals. The Saints can only get better. St. Albert heads into the year with eight underclassmen and just four juniors, one senior. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Brady Engel. Thanks, Brady. Now to the guys. You know, the Falcons also lost some key members of that state runner-up team from a season ago. And I'm thinking sharpshooter Travis Miller for one. So some of the other guys have got to step up and talk about an early season toughie. Here's IDUB TV student Steady Ben Smith. It's the home opener for the 2016 1A State Runners up against Carol Kemper. Opening minutes, Joe Liston feeds Matt Fagan down low. SA leads early 6-4. Late in the quarter, Jake Carley is left wide open and drills the three. The junior finishes with 11 points. But the Knights lead 17-15 after one. Two minutes into the second quarter, Matt Fagan gets the ball in the post. The junior with two of his 14 points. Three minutes left in the half, Joe Liston gets the and one. SA up 33-27 at the break. Third quarter, Carol Kemper gets rolling. Sam Owen with the fast break layup to cut the Falcons lead to four. The Knights outscore St. Albert 21-11 in the third. Jake Harley hits the jumper, but the Falcons trail 48-44 after three. Final quarter, junior Kyle Barnes knocks down two of his game high 19. But the second ranked team in class 2A is too much. The Knights pull away with the victory, 66 to 57. You know, games like this are really good for us down the road because we play against, we're playing against speed that really helps us, you know, raise our level of play and talent that really helps us raise our level of play too. We can't get down on ourselves because these are really good teams. We just got to keep staying positive and working hard in practice and try, like, try our best against every opponent and throw our all against them. Uh, you know, you got to learn uh, the mistakes you made. We turned it over in the second half. Um, and that game was decided on turnovers because they obviously hit some shots, which we knew they would. Um, but then we lost possession and turned the ball over. We were shooting the ball pretty well in the first half, but we lost possession in the second half. And, uh, you know, you just can't do that against a good team. You know, getting better each quarter by quarter, possession by possession. You do those things and, you know, the stuff down the road takes care of it. The Falcons have started their season 1-4 and four for the second straight year. But with nine juniors and four seniors on the roster, look for St. Albert to make another run at state. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Ben Smith. Thanks, Ben. Next up, our play of the week. What a way to close out 2016. The Iowa Western women's basketball team closes out its 2016 home schedule on the other side. your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. These Reavers are inching up in the rankings from 25th to 23rd. And all they got to do is keep winning and let the rest take care of itself. 
The Iowa Western women's basketball team closes out its 2016 home schedule with the Microtel Classic. It's full court basketball, 94 feet of in your face pressure from baseline to baseline. You gotta just love it. Here's IW TV student jumps right in, Riley Martin. The Reavers line up against Northwestern JV at Canesville Arena. IW looking for an easy win. To start the game, Deli Anya with the steal and the finish. Later in the half, Alicia Mountain drives through the contact and finishes at the rim for two of her seven points. Very good, Tug. Isaiah Johns gets the ball late in the half and glides to the tin for an easy layup. 41-20, Reavers. Iowa Western leads 49-27 at the half. The home team out-rebounds the visitors by 25 and forces 31 turnovers. Second half, Megan Looper gets fancy at the rim, 70-30, I-Dub. Northwestern getting out-coached and outplayed. Melissa Ukar leads three in double figures with 16. Iowa Western puts the icing on this cupcake, 96-52. Actually, it wasn't much to do with X's and O's and personnel on Northwestern. Um, we actually had to just focus on us being here, mind, body, and soul. I mean, we're, all the girls, I think, have been going really hard since preseason on um, August, and we are about a week away from going home. And for some of these girls, it's the first time they've ever been away from home. For this long. And so I just wanted to make sure our girls we're here, they're ready to play, we want to go have some fun. The Reavers play their next three on the road. Number 23, Iowa Western is back home Wednesday, January 4th at Canesville Arena against Highland, Kansas. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Riley Martin. And now, it's time for our play of the week. And you know, not a bad way to end the year. He's a two-time state qualifier. Max Southern from Lewis Central is now a Council Bluffs Wrestling Classic champion. The senior 160 pounder here in an earlier match outscores the kid from Apple Valley in the finals to win it all, including a $100 scholarship. LC's Max Southern with our play of the week. And that's a wrap. Another season bites the dust. 42 shows, 42 up, 42 down. As usual, it's time to take a little R&R over the Christmas holidays, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. But for now, we here at the BSZ Funhouse would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> now remember, as always, to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning in to the Council Bluffs News with Aaron Zach. And so, for this latest and last edition of the Bluff Sports Zone for 2016, <laughs> I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.